Hey everyone, it's me, Donna. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about some ideas that I have concerning some videos that I've been watching uh, on YouTube. Uh, these videos are a series. Um, I think it was mostly made for TV, but you can see these videos on YouTube. Um, and the name of the series is called The Most Dangerous Ways to School. And it shows the, the horrible difficulties that many children face in different countries all over the world um, in their journey to school. You know, when I was growing up, I thought I had it rough because I was very poor. Uh, you know, I didn't have all the supplies and things that I needed and everything. And, you know, there were times when I felt sorry for myself. Uh, but after seeing these videos, I don't feel that way anymore because I see now that I had it a heck of a lot better than a lot of these poor children, you know, in these countries who are having a really hard time uh, just getting to school. That's what's so bad. You know, just getting to school is life or death for some of these children. Uh, so yeah, it just, it blew my mind. Uh, if you want to, you can check out the videos. It's, you know, they're all over YouTube. Uh, so I'm sure it wouldn't be hard to find, you know, but anyway, um, and of course, even here in America, there's children who face dangers and everything just going to school. Uh, and my heart goes out to all these children. It's really, really sad. Um, so yeah. Um, all right. Some of the things that I noticed in watching these videos are the extreme temperatures that these children have to deal with. Uh, this goes from extremely cold temperatures from like, you know, quite a bit below zero uh, all the way up to like, you know, into the hundred degree mark. And, you know, these children are having to face these extremes, just either waiting out for a school bus or just walking to school. Uh, they're forced to have to face this. And this breaks my heart. And in some of the cold temperatures, the buses, uh, they only have like one bus. And if that bus breaks down, those children's lives are in danger because they're standing out there in the cold waiting to catch this bus and you know if it doesn't show up then they have to make a tough choice you know it's like everything is timed you know to where hey you know if this bus doesn't come here at a certain time I have to head right back uh, otherwise I will freeze to death and it, you know the bus is like an old rugged you know horrible you know bus and the bus driver has to put blankets around it and everything to keep it from freezing. Uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, there's a lot of children, children on this bus. So it's jam-packed by the time it does get to school. Um, and, uh, oh my God, that, that's just horrible, you know. Uh, and if it, you know, if it breaks down with all those children, you know, that there's some tough choices that have to be made. They could all freeze to death. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's scary. Um, also, like in the extreme high temperatures, you know, these children have to walk in severe heat for several miles just to get to school. You know, a lot of them, you know, they may or may not be able to carry water with them. So a lot of them are extremely thirsty by the time they get to school. Uh, and they don't have food like they don't have proper food and that's awful uh, or they have to pay and a lot of them they can't afford to pay for the food so there they are you know they're hungry all day you know here they are they finally made it to school luckily they didn't get killed and yet they're starving half to death and you know it's just sad um, you know in some cases you know the the parents will step in and provide one free meal but in many cases they don't and you know the meals are only for the children that can afford it and even those children that it, that supposedly can't afford it can't really afford it their their parents have to struggle 
just to come up with the money for them to to pay for the food also in some cases the children have to actually stay at the school for like months at a time and then come back home just to try to collect more money just to get uh, you know to, to be able to stay at school because the journey is so long and so deadly it's just I mean, it's just heart-wrenching, you know, and, and the parents really, really, really have to struggle just, just, you know, and sell everything that they've got and work so hard just to come up with that money so that that child can stay at the school and, you know, try try to do the best that they can, you know. Um and in some cases, uh, the children have, they don't even have like bridges to cross. And so, you know, there they are. They're having to do, do with makeshift stuff. In some cases, there's like this, this metal rope that children are having to uh, hook a, I guess what you call a buggy up to. There's, it's got a name for it, but it, it slips my mind at this moment. But they have to get in this thing and push themselves across this metal rope and get splinters and everything else in their hands and you know the rope is rusted and you know if, if anything happens if it breaks or whatever they'll fall into to you know to rivers and stuff like that to where you know they're sh they're surely going to drown or or just get killed and it's very very dangerous um, and scary i would be terrified you know i i just don't know if i could do it if i had to face those kinds of extremes just to get to school oh my goodness and and also there's children who have to climb mountains just to get to school and these are like huge steep mountains that they have to climb and one false move and they're toast and it's like, oh, my God, you know, it's just, you know, and I can just imagine, you know, me in my shape, you know, and, and my age and everything, even though I hate to admit that I'm getting older, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, I would be out of breath, you know, after a few climbs. I mean, it's just, you know, and to think these children have to do this every day just to get to school. It's like, oh, my goodness, you know, it's just awful. Uh, and there's no communication like between the parents and the children on their way to school or when they get to school. You know, the parents don't know if they've made it. They're, so they're, they're sitting there all day worried, half to death, that their children didn't make it to school. And there's no communications at all. Like even when the child is at home and whether they do or don't make it to school, the school doesn't know. You know, all they know is, well, the child did or didn't show up. That's all they know. And if they don't show up, they don't know if they've gotten killed. They don't know if they're sick or what the, the deal is, you know. So we take that for granted here that we can just pick up a phone and call in and say, hey, little Johnny's sick or whatever. And, you know, the school knows. But in these areas, the schools do not know whether or not the children made it. And as far as the schools themselves, a lot of them are very old, very rickety. Uh, it's just, you know, one classroom where all these children of different ages have to take courses. You know, and it's just one teacher teaching the whole class school. And it's just awful i mean it, it, and they don't have really the proper books and all that and you know you got one teacher trying to teach you know a five-year-old and a uh, a 12th grader basically you know it, it's just it's a lot of pressure on that teacher and a lot that they have to know just to try to make sure these children get educated and it's just it's really really sad um, yeah, and just it really, really changes your perspective of what we think of as bad school days compared to what these children probably even think of as a good school day, you know. So, yeah, um, but I have some ideas that I want to share, and here are those ideas. Uh, for starters, 
a multinational group or committee could be created that would be for all uh, participating uh, countries of the world that you know that want to participate in this it could be created uh, that it doesn't interfere with uh, any of the country's laws or politics or anything like that they don't get involved in any of that stuff uh, but any country that wants to participate that is willing to uh, cough up the tax money and I will explain that in a minute um, but it will take those tax dollars and it will check out these different countries needs as far as like where these children that are having a tough time getting to school and everything they will figure out what is the obstacle okay and then they will fix it so that's basically what they would do and and you know they won't have the teachers teaching in you know uh, things that go against these countries like they are n absolutely not allowed to get involved with any of that like they basically just they, they do a checks and balance now that they, they will be holding these countries accountable for how they're spending the money and what they're spending the money on everything will be watched like um you know that this committee will send people out to these countries and they will go over they you know they will have their uh, builders and architects and you know whatever it is that they need they will bring them and they will figure out what they need to do and they will work with these local uh, you know governments and whatever and you know figure out what needs to be done and they will make sure that the money is spent on what it needs to be spent on in other words they're not just going to hand this money over to these uh, communities within within these countries uh, and let them spend it on whatever no they will be there every step of the way making sure that the bridges will be built uh, you know and, and buses will be uh, bought uh, and you know whatever it is that they will need to buy you know they will make sure that it gets done okay but yet again they will respect the laws and the politics of those countries and those areas but you know they will be in control of the spending and then there will be another checks and balances on up the ladder that will make sure uh, that there will be little corruption which you can't completely stamp out corruption I'm smart enough to realize that but hopefully this will at least uh, cut down on it and make it um, at a minimal level and and then you know if these people are caught that are being corrupt there will be tough punishments for them so you know because th this is meant to better the lives of children and their parents and their local communities that that's basically what this is about is to hopefully educate people and make the world a better place okay so that would be the goal of this committee or this group or whatever it is uh, and hopefully the name can be called something similar to uh, safer ways to school and better communities or some title like that you know okay but basically like I said uh, you know they will send people out uh, do their investigations and uh, you know decide what needs to be done they can uh, you know buy the buses that need to be bought in these communities um, and, and various other uh, transportation let's say that the roads are teeny tiny and they can't run buses on these uh, roads well then they can come up with some other idea maybe for a little tut tut or whatever it is it's called uh, a little teeny tiny mini bus or whatever uh, that can be used to where they can pick children even if they have to make two or three different 
uh, trips back around to the same spot to pick up the children as long as you know they can do that then that's the goal you know the goal is to get free transportation for these children to get to school to make sure that they don't have to climb mountains or you know uh, go through substandard ways of crossing a river or whatever and and also like uh, speaking of that you know proper br bridges can be built you know these are bridges that will be inspected and all that type of thing to where you know and they will be put in places where they know that children will be needing to cross in order to get to school so you know that will be something and every so many years you know they will come back and inspect the bridges to make sure that they are still safe for these children okay uh, also uh, better schools will be built uh, and maybe even more schools or what I call substation schools in other words if this if there's like a huge area that is so scattered out but yet you have like maybe five or more children who have to make a long journey to school where there can be like a little sub school or substation school that can be built and teachers can be trained or what I call certified uh, teachers aides can be trained to uh, take care of children at these substation schools that will link up with the main school and the teacher there can either do uh, daily video recordings or um, they can do pre-recorded stuff that can either be uh, televised or it can be uh, put up on a website to where the teacher at the substation can set a computer before the children and they can be able to watch the videos and learn their lesson for the day uh, that can be done and in some areas these uh, substations can be set up to where if the children have to stay overnight if it's too dangerous to go home or whatever they will have cots to where they can sleep also they will have an area where they can be provided food uh, there can be like either a mini cafeteria or a um, you know definitely they're gonna have food storage regardless there will be an area to where there will be food and even at the main school you know there will be food provided and maybe cafeterias created and people hired to where they can at least provide one to two meals a day for these students so that they will food will be uh, basically a no-brainer like they know the children will know that they will be fed there will be no if ands or buts about it they will be fed okay so that that would be a must okay and also at the schools or substation schools the teachers or teachers aides will be provided with uh, accommodation living accommodations to where they will have a place to live and um, even like say like their spouses or children whatever basically like a little mini home that is on the premise of the school or substation school to where the teacher will be there and uh, you know they will be able to be with their family if they're married their their spouse and their children will be able to live with them to where they won't be separated and you know there they go and then like I said if bridges are built and transportation is provided and everything then even the teachers themselves will have access to town and ways to buy groceries and whatever to where they won't be so isolated and they can even get like school supplies whatever it is that they need for these children which also brings me to my other uh, idea as far as like there can be many more mini stores created that will have school supplies uh, you know snacks things like that there can be uh, uh, vending machines you know whatever it is those things can be provided for these children on their routes to school and even on the premises of these schools and substations you know 
these stores can be provide can be uh, created. It could be like a little mo uh, mobile school. I mean, excuse me, mobile store or however it is they want to make them. You know, least cost of course to be created, and someone can be hired to run this little mini store. Um, that will provide this for the children. And the good thing is, uh, each child will be granted, uh, hopefully, a ticket uh, that they can stick in these vending machines or provide to the clerk to where they will get one free snack a day. Like, they can get, like, well, let's just say, like, a free uh, drink and a free snack like a little bag of chips or whatever it is, uh, on top of them being, you know, provided a free meal or whatever, they can have that. Uh, wherever it is that they put this mini store, like I said, you know, the child will be given this card and it will keep up with the, the transactions of the child. Um, so there you go. You know, either money, money can be put on this card, like from their parents or whatever, uh, to where, you know, it can all be, uh, it, it, it basically will be like having kind of like a bank card or something. But like I said, each child will have at least one free snack and one free drink that will be provided on this card. Okay. And it will be pr paid for by this program. Okay. Uh, under this program, there will be free Wi-Fi uh, that surrounding the schools, uh, the substations, and the communities that these children come from. Okay, and it, but the thing about the Wi-Fi, it will mostly be for communications between the the communities and the childrens and the schools, and it will be uh, under the jurisdiction of that country. So, like, if that country has certain policies to where you can't have access to an outside Google or whatever, then this will have to follow that law. So it will have to go by the guidelines of those countries, okay? But still, the, the Wi-Fi will be provided and there will be access between and communications between the school and the communities, okay? Also, uh, you know, children's can be provided with laptops uh, and uh, cell phones. And those cell phones will not call out of the country or anything like that. They will only be used for communications between the communities and the schools. That there will be like, you know, blockers put on them to where, you know, they can't just call up anybody else willy nilly, you know. It has to be provided for the schools. Also, you know, they can uh, have access to medical, like, uh, you know, and fire and rescue. Those, those uh, things will be allowed on these cell phones uh, so that, you know, they can have, um, you know, medical attention if they need it. Uh, so, yeah, that, that would be a definite thing that will be allowed on these cell phones, okay? So, those things can be provided and paid for under this program, okay? And I think it would be a wonderful thing so that these children, even if, say like if they're sick, like if they're, if they're provided laptops, okay, and they've got their community has this free Wi-Fi uh, that connects them to their schools and everything, there will be lessons on the website from that school to where those children will have access to what they missed at school. Like if they're out sick or whatever, um, you know, at home, they can uh, go to that website and know what they were supposed to do for the day and hopefully get their homework done or whatever. Okay. Uh, when I say that the Wi-Fi will be provided, also there will be like solar uh, things that way let's just say like a community has absolutely no power or anything like that um, this program will be will provide solar power so that they will have Wi-Fi access okay and also they will be provided either uh, like solar powered um, charging devices for their laptops and cell phones each family or whatever that has a qualifying child that's going to school, they will be provided with this to where the child can keep their laptop and the cell phones connected up to, you know, to where it will be charged. In other words, they will be able to keep it charged. Okay. 
So, yeah, that that's my idea as far as that. Um, and also, like like if there's if the children still have to take a somewhat dangerous route to school, at least if they're provided a cell phone or a laptop, they can communicate either to their parents or to the school to let them know that hey, I tripped and fell. Or I'm, you know, I'm feeling sick. I'm going to come back home or whatever. They can at least communicate with someone to let them know what's going on. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I just think that would be a really good idea for that to be provided under this program. Okay. And this program can be paid for uh, by taxes on certain products and things. Uh, coming out of the participating countries, let's say like salt, wine, tobacco, whatever, like a one cent sales tax, which I know, I know, I know groceries are high enough, but you know what, if I knew that that money was going to pay for this, you know, I would gladly pay an extra penny on salt in order to, to make sure that that happens. Um, or let's even say like diamonds and you know expensive things if they could add like a nickel or a quarter or some you know some type of tax like that onto those products as well then definitely there will be enough money generated to where this can be a successful company or group to provide these you know necessary things for these children you know, it, you know, it can give them, you know, even backpacks and, you know, free school supplies and stuff like that. Like they get one free, like a backpack just full of different school supplies per year, per child. You know, that would be like a huge help and, and take a lot of burden off the parents. And the children can be provided with one or two outfits a year or every six months. So that their parents don't have to, uh, you know, buy these uniforms. They will be provided under this program for these children. So that will take a burden off these families. You know, anything that can be done to make it better, you know, I think is a great idea. Okay. And I think this would be a wonderful thing all around the world, even in the United States. There's some places that children in the United States have a hard time getting to school, getting free meals or whatever. If that area agrees to go along with this program and agrees to have a tax put on certain products, it can go for them as well. And like I said, it you know, as long as it doesn't interfere with politics or anything like that or laws or whatever... It can go for U.S. children, too, as long as they're in an impoverished area. And especially children around reservations, Native American reservations, and areas like that. These children that really, 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 really need this in this country. Uh, I want to see that go for that. I, I would love to see that happen. Okay? I think, you know, we need to do for this country as well. You know? So, if, if we could do that... You know, that, that would be a huge, wonderful thing, okay? And so the, under this program, there would be a lot of jobs created because you got to think about it. Transportation of products to all these areas, uh, there would be people needed for that. Uh, there would be, like, you know, pilots needed for airplanes and stuff like that. Uh, you know, train operators, you know, bus people, boat captains, whatever, you know, there would be so many jobs that could be created. Uh, even the store clerks for these mini mobile uh, stores, uh, new teachers and the certified teachers aides, you know, uh, builders that's, you know, people that are going to build all this stuff, architects, whatever. There's jobs there. So th there's so much good that could come from this and the benefits would just be surmountable i mean even like say like these children that go to these schools you know number one ju just making it past a certain grade would be like an accomplishment for their family i mean if that child makes it to the sixth grade or twelfth grade or whatever their family's overjoyed you know but if you can provide that child with a job once they 
graduate or make it to a certain level, holy cow, then then that, that child is set. They, they know that, okay, you know, if I make it through school, then I, I'm going to have a job. I mean, how wonderful is that? Because even it, I've noticed, you know, like these children in some of these countries that were like in the 12th grade, they didn't know what their future was, which I didn't even know what my future was after the 12th grade. And, and I'm still struggling today, you know, I'm still poor, blah, blah, blah. But regardless, if if these children knew that, hey, they, they could be a boat operator or, you know, somehow they could fit in this program. They could be a you know teacher's aide or whatever. If they, they know that this program is going to provide them somehow with a job, that they have a good chance now since this program was created, wouldn't that be wonderful? I mean, you know, just to know that okay, I'm gonna be able to feed my family, I'm gonna be able to I'm gonna be okay. You know, I'm not going to just graduate and then go back home and go back to, you know, digging in the dirt and not having anything, not having any hope or anything. If you could provide these these people with hope, and even if, if you know, and of course there, there's going to be farmers and all that that are going to be needed, you know, to make this successful and everything. Well, if you know you can be a farmer under this program, hey, there you go. You know, anything that... that, that fits in what you want to be when you grow up, if you feel like there's any chance that you can get a job in this program, then that's a huge thumbs up. There you go, you know. Uh, and of course, I know I'm dreaming, <laughs> you know, with coming up with this idea and everything, but I still want to put that out there, and I still have the hope that maybe, somehow, some way, someday, that there is a chance that this could be created. So thank you guys for listening. I really, really appreciate it. Hope everyone has a nice day. Bye.